In our previous tutorial, we looked at how Maven chooses the standard directory structure and uh, makes changes and customizes the structure depending on uh, the uh, art type that you select. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the second half of the process, which is the build process. Once you have done the coding and uh, you want to actually build and uh, deploy the code, you would use Maven again for this purpose. And uh, we'll look at how Maven helps us in this part of the process. So build was something that we did using just a command or a couple of commands. If you've gone through the introduction tutorial, uh, we did an MVN compile and we did an MVN uh, package. And you know, there is just one command to care of the whole thing. Uh, that's because there's a lot of intelligent defaults that's, that's set up. So uh, we don't have to specify each and everything. If you can compare this with uh, something similar like and you would have to specify each and everything that you want and to do. For example, if you have five classes, you would have to instruct and to compile and uh, package all those five classes. Of course, you don't have to mention each class specifically, you can use wildcards, but uh, every step has to be explicitly mentioned. But in the case of Maven, that's not the case. Uh, it, has, it, it has a standard uh, directory structure and uh, it knows what needs to be done. Uh, one example that we have seen is that uh, we have two folders called the main and the test. So if the code is in the main, it assumes that to be the actual application source code. And if the code is in the test folder, then you know Maven assumes it to be uh, test cases. And uh, depending on that, it compiles and it packages the main source code. It does not package the test, but uh, it uses the test to run test cases before we actually package it. So let's try to understand what's happening there in a bit more detail. The Maven build uh, has something called as a build life cycle. And uh, this is something that has been defined as a part of the Maven architecture. Uh, every build follows a life cycle. Indeed, every build that we would do without uh, without even considering Maven, we would have a life cycle for the build. First, we would actually write the code and then we would uh, compile it. We would uh, run test cases on it and uh, we would probably package it. We would uh, install it in a particular uh, you know, repository or a, a shared location where other developers can use our uh, binaries. So there is there is this step-by-step uh, -step process that's there for every build life cycle. And that's something that Maven understands and incorporates. So Maven has an internal build life cycle itself. The build life cycle has been split into different phases. Uh, compile is a build phase and uh, test is a build phase. So all these phases together comprise of the build life cycle in Maven. And if you do not explicitly configure it, Maven chooses the default build life cycle. We'll look at what the default build life cycle is. But uh, we actually saw that in action when we did a MVN compile or uh, when we did the MVN package. So some of the phases have default behavior. I just talked about compile. Compile takes the code in the main directory and then it compiles it, assumes it to be application code. And the compile assumes the, you know, the code in the test directory to be uh, test cases. So these, this is the default behavior that the compile uh, phase has. So similar uh, default behavior exists even in the other phases. When we have all these different uh, build phases, say for example, let's take three build phases here. We, let's take compile, test and package. In order to do a package, you would have to do a compile and a test. A test is not really necessary, but it's ideal. You know, you know, if you're packaging a code, you would prefer that it be tested and it's necessary that the code be compiled. So the uh, other default behavior that Maven has is once you specify a phase, it automatically executes the previous phases. So if you specify a package, Maven automatically runs the compile phase and the test phase. So you don't have to explicitly specify that. So now with this understanding, let's have a look at what the phases actually are. Some of the phases that you would commonly use in uh, Maven, this is not a comprehensive list, but this is something, th these are some of the phases that we would use a lot. So the first phase is the validate phase. Uh, you wouldn't actually explicitly call this, but uh, as we've discussed, some of the other phases that we run, 
automatic automatically call the previous phases so in that way validate the first phase ends up getting called a lot so what validate does is it checks if everything is in order whether we have the pom.xml in place whether it's all uh, the configuration is proper whether we have all the code in pro you know in a proper way these kind of validation checks are done in the validate phase so once this is done we have the compile phase we know very well what the compile phase is it just takes all the dot java files and then it you know compiles it into dot class files if we run the compile phase directly it automatically runs the validate phase because that's the phase before this after this is a test phase test is where we run the test cases which we have specified for our uh, code say for example i have uh, a my app dot java as uh, my application class file and uh, I have a my app test dot Java as the test case for my my app uh, Java class. So test automatically knows that there is a test case for the code that I'm trying to compile. So what it does is after compilation, it goes and pulls up all those test cases and executes those test cases. So again, if you specify test directly, it makes sure that validate and compile are run. So the next phase is the package phase. Now you package the code and uh, in the sense you package all the class files that come up and this phase again executes all the other phases and say test fails for example pick a package also fails and it says okay you have you have a test case that's errored out so if that's the case there's no really no point in packaging the code because it's probably a bug if all these three phases execute successfully then package happens package ends up in a .jar file or a dot uh, .war or .ear file depending on what we specified in the pom.xml. So this will end up in the uh, output artifact that we intend to achieve by writing and compiling the code. So after package, there is one more phase and uh, this is called as the install phase. What the install phase does is after you've uh, run the package phase and generated the artifact, install installs that package the artifact into a local uh, maven repository note that install here is not installation into your uh, server say for example you're uh, writing a web application install does not mean you take the war and install it into your tomcat or any other uh, application server install is maven specific here it actually installs to a local maven repository most most of the times a local maven repository is on your machine itself and uh, this is a discussion we had in our previous tutorial whenever we whenever we have dependencies and whenever we need to reference other artifacts that we have say one project references code in another project a jar which has been the output of another build for example so what maven does is maven first uh, you know when it sees a dependency it goes and looks at the local repository and if it doesn't find it only then it goes to a online repository and pulls up the jars so install is something that helps you to publish your jars into your local repository so that if you are having a dependency on another project it goes and pulls it up from the local repository itself and finally there is one more phase which often ends up in a lot of confusion because of the name uh, this phase is called as the deploy phase again just like I've mentioned for the install the deploy does not deploy to your application server. So you'd use the deploy phase only if you're publishing your artifact to the remote repository where other users can uh, download. So this is not something that you normally use when you're developing applications uh, unless you are uh, writing code that is on the repository and can be shared with others. So in order to run any of these phases, first we need to go to the directory where we have the pom.xml. I'll validate that. So here we are. We have the pom.xml here and we have the source code as well. So this is uh, the default directory structure that we've got by selecting the artifact that we did in our uh, previous tutorial. So now that we are here in this directory, in order to run a phase, we need to type mvn and the phase name. So for example, I need to do a compile. So I type mvn compile so compile checks for the projects it sees that there is a dot pom.xml in the same directory and uh, then it goes to the source uh, directory and then finds all the dot java files and then it compiles it here it's found just one source file and uh, it's converted that to a class file and it has saved it into the target class
so here's the target directory that's created by uh, the compile command. So inside this target directory, we have a classes folder, and here we have our class file dot Java converted to a dot class file. Now let's say I want to run all the test cases that I have written for this uh, application. So what we need to do again is mvn and run that phase name, which is test. Now Maven is going to pull up all the test cases that are available in the test directory and run them. So we have only one test uh, class, which is the app test. Uh, it's a dummy class that Maven created for us. We don't have anything. So it obviously says that uh, the test has been executed successfully. Now let's say I want to package this. I run a mvn package. Now note again that it's going to do all the previous steps, the compile and the test. So if you scroll up, here you see, first it's tried to run the compile and then it says there is there is a, there are no classes left to compile because it, based on the timestamp it sees that the, all the class files are up to date. Then it tries to run the test. Yes, it does run the test. And uh, you know, there is only one test case which executes successfully and then after that, it tries to build the jar and uh, it's done that here. It's built the jar and it's placed it into the target directory. So if we look at that, target directory has the Maven test app. Now, if you look here, there are a few other uh, directories that have been created. So we'll get back to that. Some of these Surefire uh, directories are related to the test and there are a few other directories here as well. We'll have a look at that in the later tutorials, but for now, Note that a jar file is generated when you run the package command. Now this jar file also has the version uh, number that we have specified that's also there in the name along with the, uh, with, the, with the artifact name itself. Now after this is done, now I want to install this. When I do an install, it publishes this jar file into the local repository. Again, it does not start from the publishing. It actually starts from the first phase, which is the validate. It runs through all the steps again. Uh, in some steps, in, for example, in the case of a compile, it can bypass that step because it notices that all the classes have been compiled. But uh, test cases, I believe, will run every time. So there are some steps which will be skipped, but it makes sure that all the steps are considered one after the other before the step that we are trying to execute runs. So now in the case of a install, again, you can see it runs all the previous steps. It runs the compile, it is running the test. Now here it's running the install step and uh, you can see it's downloaded a few um, components from the remote repository. And then finally, it has actually installed it. I think this is downloading this because this is the first time I've run an install on this machine. So if you if you're running it for the uh, second time, you'd not see the downloading part, but you would see this part. See, you see here it's installed the jar to this directory. So it's in my home folder dot m2 and repository. And then again, you have the package folder structure, and I have my application name here and the version and then the jar file with the same name that we've seen earlier. So there's again a handy way to check where exactly our, you know, our jar files are being published in the local repository. You can open up this local repository directory and have a look at this. You can see a few more things. All the downloads that you see here will go to the local repository and it'll be saved in a similar file and folder structure.